Let's talk about the M5. M4's been out over a week now. It's old news. Who cares? Just because the M4 Max is the fastest chip on the planet, it also has a 4 in it, so it's boring now. I mean, sure, when they put out the Ultra, we will throw it a glance, but more importantly, M5. When's it coming, and what should we expect? And what outside of M5 will Apple bless us with next year? Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell. I probably wouldn't hold your breath for too much, but I think we can mark our calendars for late October 2025. Looking at the M Pro and M Max chips, three out of the four last years, it's been in late October, with only the M2 being the outlier, which arrived in January, but when you look at the pattern, I think it's clear that, that was just a delay issue and the regular M2 arrived earlier. So the annual update cycle that I predicted before the M1 even launched at the start of my channel has come to fruition. Suck it, Max Tech. With M5, though, don't expect as dramatic a jump as we got with M4, at least in the CPU performance department. M5 is most likely to use the same 3 nanometer node process as the M4, and Apple may well be looking to optimize as much as possible in terms of the M5 for efficiency rather than adding huge performance, though they may well focus too on the GPU and the neural engine performance. Why? Well, from what we've heard, we're also not likely to get the MacBook Pro redesign until 2026 when it will get all thin again to match up with the iPad Pro, making more of the Air range make less sense name-wise. Which makes me think, maybe that skinny iPhone 17 we've been hearing about with just the one camera? Maybe that's actually the Pro 2, if Air now means heavy and Pro means thin. Now, I know, I know, with just one camera, Yes, it's hella confusing, but Apple are atrocious at naming their devices. At least, they have been for the last few years at any rate. But we're here to talk about the Mac. Stop distracting me. But I did think to myself, I wonder if Apple is going to lead a trend of going back to a single camera on their premium devices, and that one camera has some kind of new lens system, which basically means that it can cover what all of the other lenses used to do. I don't know, but wouldn't it be cool? Just like they took out all of the ports and waited for everyone else to do the same thing before putting them all back in on the MacBook Pros. Now, the GPU makes sense to optimize as it's always been one of Apple's weaker points, although the M4 Ultra does look like it will be surpassing the Nvidia 4090 when it arrives, but of course the 50 series is on the way. Now Apple keeps shouting about gaming on the Mac as well, and they do seem to be starting to shift. Hearing that we have Cyberpunk on the way is pretty awesome, but it's just four years after the release on the PC, so we're not quite there yet. But remember that the M4 Ultra will be on board graphics, beating the dedicated desktop 4090, so that's still pretty ace, and using probably about a tenth of the energy. And the neural engine. With a year of Apple intelligence being in the hands of the public, Apple will have a bit more of a steer on what Apple intelligence is actually being used for in the real world, just like when the Apple Watch landed and Apple realised sending your heartbeat to your friend's wrist wasn't necessarily what we wanted the watch for. It was basically the fitness tracker. So Apple is almost certainly building in plenty of headroom in the next generation of chips, which, let's be honest, were probably designed a couple of years ago, ready to take on whatever they need. Plus, remember that most of Apple's competitors are doing the majority of their processing in the cloud, where Apple will push as much to being on device as possible for both privacy reasons, as well as minimizing their server costs. Running AI servers isn't cheap. And I don't think Apple ever wants to charge a subscription for their Apple intelligence features because they're a perk of buying the hardware, just like getting Pages, Numbers, Keynote, alongside iMovie and GarageBand for free when you get their devices. You can't really do them on Windows. Microsoft charges a subscription for their Office Suite, and don't even get me started on Adobe. But yes, I am still giving them money for Photoshop. Come on, Pixelmator. Let's uh, let's have Apple fix that for me. On the CPU side, though, expect efficiency gains probably over speed. Now, this might seem odd given that the M4 MacBook Pros now top out around 24 hours of use on a single charge, but as we're expecting them to slim down dramatically in the following year, reducing the dependence on big batteries might well be on the cards for Apple, as well as minimizing the amount of heat that needs to be dissipated. Right now, the 16-inch MacBook Pro has pretty much got as much battery as you can physically put in something without not being allowed to fly on a plane with it. Also, I'd be surprised if the iPad Pro is at the front of the line for M5. Not because the iPads can't use fast chips. The M5, in essence, is the A19X that would have been in an iPad in the past, just like the M1 was a successor to the A12Z. The iPad Pro 
jumped the queue for the M4 because TSMC was really struggling with making the last generation of chips. So I'd guess it will be late in the year when the Macs arrive in October. So maybe we'll get four days of releases next year. Maybe even five if the iPad Air jumps up to an M4 chip. And that reminds me, I think the week of announcements this year for the M4 Max has been really successful for Apple. But is it successful enough that they might even break up the September event like Google when it meets the EU? I actually think there's a decent chance splitting the event over multiple days where Apple Watch gets its time to shine and the base iPhone gets a day, the pro iPhones get a day. That would actually make sense. And if you add in the base iPad and the Mini 2, you could have a whole week of Watch and A-series chips, and then a month later, the M-chip event week. Apple could just invite journalists to Apple Park for the final day of each so that the influencers get the chance to go hands-on with new hardware and we get to see pictures of it that aren't just rendered. And while the M5 isn't the most exciting chip in Apple's silicon lineup from what we're hearing at least, there's a good chance that Apple's HomeKit display that may or may not be basically a robot version of the iMac G4 for your kitchen will also arrive in 2025. I mean, when we have center stage cameras on most devices now, the camera that follows you around the room is surely just the next step. But my hope is that whatever this bizarre home cyborg thing is, it arrives as part of a much bigger Apple push into the home automation front. It becomes the hub for all of your smart home devices. I, for one, have finally started using smart lighting here in the studio and around more of the house, along with some smart plug outlets too. So we'll probably do a video on that sometime soon. And I think we're finally at the tipping point where the complexity to set them up doesn't outweigh the convenience of actually using them once they are set up. Finally, I want an Apple branded vacuum chasing the kids around the house, uh, my music to intelligently follow me as I walk through the door and onto the different HomePods around the house as I walk by them. Just kind of that flow if that's what you want. You know, it, it knows where you are because of your phone or your watch and you can just enjoy it around the house. I want the Apple TV to know who's watching based on the device that's being used as the remote control and suggest our favourite shows. I want AirPods not to just work in pairs, but work seamlessly throughout the home so that you don't miss what's going on with a movie that you are watching if the mailman arrives. Take it with you around the house on an iPad while the rest of the family carries on watching on the main screen if you need to go and fetch a blanket or make some more popcorn. There's a lot to look forward to, and next year... Could it be someone else other than Tim saying good morning to us? John Turnus, we're looking at you. But what do you think about M5? Are you excited for it? Are you just happy that we've got M4 and it's epic? Uh, I mean, honestly, the rest of the chip industry must be struggling right now. Even Linus has said the Mac Mini with M4 is basically the computer to buy for anyone who isn't like a full-time gamer. That is pretty amazing. And they cannot match it. On performance at any size for that price. Luke tried. Let's jump right into our headline topic, which is, of course, the Apple Mac Mini with their new M4 processor. I'm going to shop for a Mac, and you're going to try to build a PC for the same price as me. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me your questions down in the comments. Thank you to the Patreons. Join them at icavedave.com forward slash Patreon, and I'll see you in the next one. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.